The Lord sees you and I in everything we do. In our worship service, He's there. Taking account, taking record of everything you and I do. In our night vigils, He's there. Taking record, keeping stock of what we do. In our prayer sessions, the Lord is there. He's listening to our prayer requests. He's taking notes. He's keeping records. When we study the Bible, either collectively or individually, the Lord is there. He's paying attention to what you and I are doing. He's taking stock. He's keeping record. But the message unto you and I this morning is practicing Christianity. Practicing the word of God. Practicing the commandments of God. For those of us who every now and then visit our, our doctors, our physicians, when you go into your physician's office, there's something that tells you that that person is a medical practitioner. If you go into his or her office and they start to talk about things unrelated to medicine or things unrelated to your health, then you, you begin to wonder and you think you're in the wrong place. Am I correct? Yes. For those of us who for one reason or the other have visited a court of law, or you've, you've, you've had the need to you know, have an attorney defend you. When you visit that attorney, there's something about him or her that tells you this person is a what? A legal practitioner. Now when the world sees you and I today, what is that thing they see in us that makes them believe or makes them know that we're Christians? Children of God, the most important thing to Almighty God is the practice of his, com his commandments. It's not how many times we come to church. Church is important. Worship is very important. But what do we do in the course of the worship? Are we just coming to mark attendance? Are we just coming so the world can see us and say, oh, that person is a Christian? When we're praying, Many of us, we know how to pray. But what happens afterwards? Those commandments that God gives to you and I, are we practicing them? Those instructions that he gives to you and I, are we practicing them? The first lesson. And the vision of Obedea, yes. thus says the Lord God, yes. concerning Edom, yes. we have heard a rumor from the Lord, yes. and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Yes. Arise ye, yes. and let us arise up against her in battle. Yes. Behold, yes. I have made thee small among the heathen. Yes. Thou art greatly despised. Yes. The pride of thine heart. Slow down. It says the pride of your heart. This is one of the things that as Christians we should not be practicing. Go ahead, man. The pride of thine heart yes. has deceived thee. It says the pride of our hearts has deceived us. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs yes. of the rock. Yes. Whose habitation is high? Whose habitation is high? That said in his heart. That said in his heart. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who shall bring me down to his ground? To the ground. Slow down. This thing called pride should not be found in a Christian. This thing called pride. When we feel we have arrived, when we feel we know it all, when we feel we have acquired all the power in the world. As far as I'm concerned, my Bible tells me all power in heaven and on earth belongs to God. But when we feel we don't need God to direct us anymore, when we feel that we don't need God to control us, or, or, us anymore, then we're filled with pride. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. He says, though you exalt yourself as the eagle. The, in the Bible, the... the, the, the the eagle is used to describe different scenarios. 
when you think about the eagle, it's one of the one of the strongest in the bird family. Its eyes are very sharp. For miles ahead, it can detect prey. It can see. Its its wingspan alone. Some of them can reach up to seven feet. The eagle doesn't need anyone to build his nest for him. The eagle does not need to consult with anyone before he eats food. When you see the eagle flying, there is this confidence about it compared to other birds. Go ahead. And thou hast set thy nest among the stars. He said, when you set your nest among the stars, then when you feel that you are now rolling with the biggest people in the world, the people that have connection, the people that now feel they are above the law, the people that no one can touch, when you set your nest among, in the, the, among the stars, you now live in a neighborhood that is gated. You now live in a mansion that you barely enter all the rooms in a week. When you set your net among the stars, go ahead. Then will I bring thee down. The Thanks Lord says what? I will, I will bring you down. down. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. The Lord is not interested in our pride. He wants us to be humble. The Lord is not interested in what you know or what you don't know. He is more interested in what you do with that which he has given unto you. This thing called pride, let us run away from it. The same first lesson, verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. For the violence against your brother Jacob, yes? Shame shall cover thee. It says, Shame shall cover thee. And thou, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Pause for a second. The violence the Lord is talking to you and I today is not the violence we see on TV. It's not when we hear that some teenager picked up a gun and killed people in the school or in the shopping mall or this or that. Anyone can shoot a rifle, anyone can shoot a gun. Our kids play with water guns, don't they? It's just a matter of focusing on your target and pressing the trigger. Within a split second, the damage is done. But in the spiritual, as Christians, the violence the Lord is talking to us about today is unrelated to the things of the flesh. It says the violence against your brother Jacob. Go ahead. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. Yes. And thou shalt be cut off forever. Yes. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side. In the day that you stoodest on the other side. That day when everything was going good for you. That day when your house was built in the stars. That day when you were flying like a, an eagle. That day when your bank account was fat. That day when you had all the cars, you had everything. You are living in good health. You were not in need of, of anything. When you stood us on the other side, go ahead. In the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces. Yes. And foreigners entered onto the, his gates. Foreigners entered onto your neighbor's gates, yes. And cast lots upon Jerusalem. Yes. Even thou was as one of them. You are one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Don't look at your brother on in the day he or she becomes a stranger. Yes, go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Yes. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Yes. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. Yes. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of the calamity. Yes. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Yes. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his of his that did escape. Yes. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Thank you very much. The Lord is giving us simple instructions. He's telling us our doors, our doors. When someone is down, when someone is okay, let's let, let let me let me do a quick survey. Is there anyone sitting here this morning, this afternoon, that has an enemy? Raise your hands. If you feel you have an enemy, raise your hand. Let's be sincere with ourselves. Thank you, Thank you very much. God, God will deliver you. But on a serious note, God has given us instructions. Do not do this. 
When your enemy is down, don't look down on them. When calamity befalls them, don't look down on them. When they are sick, whatever it, it, it is that they might be going through, what happens with a lot of us Christians is pride will not set in. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know why he or she is going through what they're going through. It's because of what they've done. Forgetting that God controls everything. Forgetting that there's a season for everything. Now I ask us, because the world today is telling us that we shouldn't do all those things. Now, when I ask who has an enemy, if it's safe, 95% of us raise up our hands. Right? You don't have to. I mean, you can answer it to yourself. But all those things that the Lord is telling us not to do, it's not always funny when people do it to us. Right? And in some cases, when they do it to us, we consider them our enemies. But children of God, as much as we have enemies, if I ask this question now, do you think you are an enemy to somebody? Do you think you are an enemy to somebody? Because in as much as we don't like these things done to us, when we do it to other people, we are enemies to those people. We'll see why in a few minutes. Second lesson, Luke 6. From verse 27. What I say unto you, yes. which here, yes. love your enemies. It says love your enemies. Children of God, it's very difficult, it's extremely difficult to be a born again Christian. How can you tell me to love my enemies? How can you tell me to love someone who is wishing evil towards me? How can you tell me to love that person that is planning to kill me? But God says, love your enemies. It's a commandment from God. Whether we like it or not. Whether we're comfortable with it or not. We must love our enemies. That's what God is telling you and I today. Go ahead. Do good to those who hate you. You yes. know this person hates you. But yet we've been instructed to do good to that person. Yes. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek. When he smites you on one cheek. Offer, all, offer also the other. He says give him the other cheek. Hold on one second. As painful as it might sound. Someone smites you on one cheek. And the Lord is commanding you and I, as a Christian, to turn the other cheek. Yes, it hurts when people smite us on the cheek sometimes. I'm not talking of physically. When they do things that hurt us, that make us want to seek revenge. It hurts. It's painful. If you've ever been, been, been hit on, on the cheek, we all respond differently. For some of us, the tears will just be dropping down, yeah. down, down our eyes. The ones that will cry and be shaking their shoulders like this. <laughs> this is why God is reminding you and I this morning. It's not an easy task being a Christian. I'm not going to stand here and deceive you. It's not easy. Because from there, some people will do certain things to you. You just want to. You want to act. <laughs> But God is not concerned about what they've done to you. He wants you to love regardless. Go ahead, man. Offer also the other. Yes. And him that taketh away thy cloak. Yes. Forbid not to take thy cloak, thy, thy coat also. Yes. Give to every man that asketh of thee. Give unto every man that asks of you. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not a, an, an opinion. Give to everyone that asks of you. As long as it's in your power to do so, give. If it's financially, give. If it's shelter, give. If it's clothing, give. If it's food, give. Because guess what happens when we don't give? And it's in our power to do so. We become an enemy to that person that is in need. Go ahead. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Yes. And as ye would 
as, and as you will that men should do to you. He says, as you want other people to do unto you. Do you also to them likewise. Yes. For if you love them which love you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. That's what God means when he says we should turn the other cheek. The same way you want to be treated, treat others. Yes, people offend us. People plot evil against us. People do all sorts of things to us that puts us in that position where we don't want to show love. But what are the ones we do to our neighbors? When the prophet calls you and tells you, the Lord says you should do this, you should do that, blessing is coming. We are quick to obey those instructions. We are quick to practice what the Lord tells us to do because of blessings. But when things are difficult, when it's difficult for you to love your neighbor, when it's difficult for you to, 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 to hold back from not paying evil, it says we should love. It's understandable, sometimes people offend us and it's difficult. People offend us and we don't trust again. But the commandment he gave us is the most important thing. He says we should put our trust in God. We, should, we shouldn't put our trust in man. Trust is, a, is, is not a commandment. So I can love you, but I may not trust you. That's what a lot of us do. But that's a different story entirely. God is more focused on what we do, on how we obey those instructions that he has given unto you and them. When someone is in need, what do we do? The Bible tells us, as long as it's in your power to do so, don't tell your neighbor to go and come back tomorrow. If it's in your power to do so, do it. In the first lesson, Badea 115 tells us something. For the day of the Lord is near. It says the day of the Lord is near. Upon all the heathen. Upon all the heathen. Upon all those who have chosen not to believe in God. Yes. As thou hast done. Yes. It shall be done unto thee. Yes. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Thank you very much. This is a very scary verse. So as we live our lives as Christians. Let us be mindful of what we do on a daily basis. It says the day of the Lord is near. It's not talking of the day of judgment. It's talking of that season when God will come and give you according to what you have done to others. You cannot plant orange seeds and expect to harvest pineapple. It's not possible. What you've done to others will be done unto you. The day of the Lord is near, children of God. Prepare for the day of the Lord. When it's winter, we prepare ourselves. We get our coats ready, we get our hats ready, we get our gloves, everything ready to keep us warm. And when the, when, when the warm season is coming, we put all those clothes that make us warm away. We bring out the t-shirts, the, sh the shorts, and so on. But it's telling you and I that the day of the Lord is near. The way you've treated others, that's the way others will treat you. For those who don't believe in God, for those who get involved in idolatry, who are constantly tampering with people's lives, people's futures, people's worship, he says the day of the Lord is coming. If someone is progressing, speak to them. How are you doing it? Use them as a point of reference in your prayer. Yes, we pray God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Many of us were not born then. But at least when people testify to the goodness of God today, we can use them as a point of reference. How did you do it? Pray for me. I'm seeking something like this. Don't join. Don't go and join ungodly, unclean, unchristian groups and begin to torment people. People are progressing. It's, it's, that's what's going on in the Christian world today. And that's why it's difficult for some people to even talk to others about Christ. 
Because when they see us, we are not practicing Christianity. If I go to an attorney's office and I see mechanical tools, I will wonder if it's really an attorney. <laughs> if I come into the church today, before I turn into my sitana, and I'm wearing a, what's the thing the doctors wear? The scrubs. And I have a stethoscope on my neck. If you don't know me, you think I'm a doctor. You think I'm a medical doctor. But I'm far from that field. That's what's happening in the world today. The world is seeing us and they don't know we are Christians because we are not practicing Christianity. In our places of work, in our neighborhood. Your neighbor's trash spills on, 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 on your lawn. So, are we taking that grass to heaven? Are we taking that lawn to heaven? You make a big deal out of it. In your place of work, in my place of work, someone does something to us, instead of us to forgive, we we'll start giving the person an attitude. Then how do we want to bring them to Christ when we're not practicing Christ? How do we want to bring people to Christ when we're not practitioners of the word of God? There was a, there was a year I attended every Sunday service, but does that mean I was doing the will of God? Every Sunday service I attended that year. But when God decided to reveal himself to me, well, okay, you are attending church, so? You come to the church, you do all you have to do and you leave. What are you doing outside the church? You act like a Christian, holy, holy, your, your sultana is clean, you do, do this, you do that. But what are we doing? Are we practicing love or are we practicing hatred? Are we practicing good or are we practicing evil? When they strike us once, are we trying to strike back seven times? May God help us. Amen. Galatians 6, 7. Do not deceive. Yes. God is not mocked. We cannot mock God. The Bible is telling us that we cannot mock God. Yes, go ahead. For whatsoever a man soweth. It says, whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. Yes, go ahead. For he that soweth to, the, to his flesh yes. shall of the flesh reap corruption. Yes. But he that soweth to the spirit yes. shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Thank you. Hold on for one second. It says he that soweth to the, to, the, to, to the flesh will reap corruption. God cannot be mocked. I may be able to mock you, you may be able to mock me. But we cannot mock God. I might give you a hug in the morning. I might tell you have a blessed day. I might tell you it is well with you. But you don't know what I'm thinking. This is where we Christians mock each other every day. We go to church, we come back. We do Bible study, we come back. We connect on the phone, we come back. But what are we doing when, we, when, when we're done with all those services? What are we doing when we're done with all those night videos? What are we doing when we're done with all those Bible studies? And we're Christians. We're of Christ. Christ said we should love. When Christ, the, 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 when, 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 when Christ was being crucified, what happened? He had the whole power on, in heaven and on earth. He could have done anything to those who were spitting on him. He could have done anything to those who were flogging him. He could have done anything to those who were insulting him. But he left them alone. It's difficult to be a Christian. It's not an easy task. And that is why every day at the end of our day, we should take stock, we should take account of the life we are living. Don't wait till December 31st when the shepherd hammers, hammers us with that thought-provoking sermon that he gives us at the end of every year. Don't wait till then. Wait till the end of the day. Have I shown my neighbor love today or have I shown them hatred? Have I done good or have I done evil? Go ahead. And let us not be wary in well doing. Don't be wary in well doing. For in due season. For in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. For we shall reap if we faint not. Go ahead. As we have therefore opportunity. Yes. Let us do good unto all men. Yes. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. God bless you. It says, let us do good to all men. Don't be selective in doing good. We're not supposed to do good to our family members only. 
the financial blessings we seek for, the big house, the cars, this, that. It's not for our, our, our close relatives only. He says, especially those of the household of God. We all have an opportunity to do good. Whether it's opening the door for an elderly person, whether it's opening the door for a young child who is carrying something and you know they don't have, do good. We all have opportunities. It's not only when it comes to financial or, 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 or material things. Some of these little things. Make it an effort to do good. That is what people of the world will see and know that we are Christians. We shouldn't have to open our mouth and, and say we are Christians. Non-Christians know what Christians should be doing. And that is why many times when we even start to preach to them, they challenge us. They know the Bible more than we do. But unfortunately, sometimes they twist it. If you are not careful, you start believing what they believe. But make it a point of duty at the end of your day every day. Think of what you have done and what you did not do. Before we start counting our enemies, let us make sure we are not enemies of God. Let us make sure we are not enemies of our brothers, of our sisters. Let us make sure we are not enemies of strangers. Because guess what? Some strangers only have one opportunity to encounter Christ. And that is through you, through me. A stranger might be hungry now. He has been praying to God for his daily bread. And he sees you with so much money. He sees you with excess money. You don't know what to do with it. And he goes to ask you, I just need something to eat. And this stranger has been praying to God. Created by God. Born of a woman. What makes us different from that stranger? And you don't give to that person. And someone else who is not even a Christian eventually gives to the person. Then how would a third party now preach Christ to that person? Because the day they were asking you for money, guess what? You forgot you were wearing your sutana. You were holding your Bible. You had the sticker on your card that says Celestial Church of Christ. And the person begins to wonder, is that not a Christian? Is that what Christians are supposed to do? May God help us. Amen. In conclusion, the book of James, chapter 1. James 1 21. Wherefore, yes. lay apart all filthiness. Yes. Or all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Yes. And receive with meekness the engrafted word. Yes. Which is able to save your soul. Yes. But be ye doers of the word. But be ye doers of the word. Yes. And not hearers only. Not just hearers only. Receiving your own self. Because that, that's, what, that's what happens. That's what's happening in the Christian world today. We hear the word. We can recite the Bible verses, which is good. There's a time for everything. There's a time to quote the Bible. Go ahead. For if any be hear of the word, yes. and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. It's like when you look into a mirror in the morning, you are getting ready to go out. And you see something on your forehead. And as soon as you turn away from the mirror, you don't even remember that there's something on your head. Go ahead. For he beholdeth himself. Yes. And goeth his way. Yes. And straightway for, forgetteth what manner of man he was. Yes. But whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty. Yes. And continueth daring. Yes. He being not a forgetful hearer. Yes. But a doer of the word. But a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Yes, right. For if any man among you seem to be religious. Is, if any man amongst you. If any, any one of us we Christians seems to be religious. Oh, my sister, God bless you. Ah, my brother, it is well. <laughs> Go ahead. And breathed not his tongue. Yes. But deceived his own heart. Yes. This man's religion is vain. Yes. Pure religion and undefiled before God. Pure religion and undefiled before who? Before God. Not before man. All these things we are doing, we are doing it before God. 
our service, our worship, everything, our going out, our coming in, in our places of work, when we're driving, when we're in the store, when we're flying, when we're in the bus, when we're on the train, when we're walking, all these things we're doing it before God. Yes, because every situation we find ourselves, every side we find ourselves, it's an opportunity to do the will of God. It's an opportunity to practice Christianity. Go ahead. And the father is this. Yes. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. To visit the fatherless, to visit the widows in their affliction. And how many of us, you know, oh my God, how many of us, you know, we, we, we're, we're so blessed as Christians. You can see that. We're so blessed as Christians to hear the word of God. There are so many mediums that are being used to spread the word. If you come to church, you hear the sermon. If you don't leave before the end of the church, before the end of the service, you hear the women's evangelism. If someone has a testimony, you hear their testimony. That's why it's important to pay attention during testimony time. If you have a phone in this day and age and you're on WhatsApp or any kind of app, people spread the word. There's YouTube, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, so many types of grams, so many types of everything that the word is being used, mediums that are being used to spread the word of God. We receive all these things almost on a daily basis. But yet, we still choose to behave like idol worshippers. Yet, we still show hatred towards our neighbors. I can't see your heart, you can't see my heart. But God sees all of us. And that is why he is more interested in what we practice. If it's about coming to church, if it's about carrying Bibles, if it's about wearing the white sutana, or wearing our suits, depending on the denom denomination we go to, we can all package. It's all called packaging. No, on a serious note, it's all packaging. Because only God knows why you're doing that. Are you doing it to please your spouse? Are you doing it to please the shepherd? It should not be so. That's not the life of a Christian. Everything a, a Christian is doing should be to please the almighty God. Because it says the day is coming. The day of the Lord is near. He's not talking of the day of judgment. Too. Because there's a time for everything. You see your neighbor hungry. Please go out there and help them. Help the homeless. Help the fatherless. Help the widows. We are all blessed in one way or the other. Use that blessing to glorify God. Sometimes you don't even have to ask someone if they've given their life to Christ. By the things we do, by the things we practice. When you see an attorney, and I keep using the example of an attorney of, or, or a medical practitioner. When you, even when you enter an attorney's office, there's, there are certain things that are usually common among them. Sometimes you see all these huge books. You wonder how they read them. Did you have to read all that to go through law school? You open doctor's bag now, I'm sure you see a stethoscope. You might see something for checking blood pressure. You might see things that identify he or her as a doctor or as an attorney. But we Christians, ours is always different. But God is telling you and I today, love, it's a commandment. He's not suggesting it to you and I. Do good to those who come your way. Don't do evil. Don't see someone progressing and you are now plotting evil to bring them down. God is recording all those things. Because like the Bible says, whatever we sow, whatever we sow, whatever we sow, we shall reap. What are you sowing today? What are you practicing today? If you don't mean it from the bottom of your heart, don't tell someone bless you. God is recording all of that. <laughs> if you don't feel the desire to pray for someone, don't pray for them until you feel strong enough. 
Because let me tell you something. Those who live in idolatry, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffering violence. And the, and the violent taken by force. Is it about guns? No. Is it about weapons of mass destruction? No. But a violent heart, that heart that regardless of what, is willing to do the will of God, is willing to obey the commandments of God, even when you're being killed, even when you're being crucified. And that is why those on the other side, they appear very violent to we who have chosen to follow Christ. Because brothers and sisters in the Lord, it takes a lot for me to come and give you a hug or give you a handshake or pray for you, but yet I'm wishing you evil. Do you know how much psychological effort or physical effort it takes to deceive somebody? I was talking to my wife this morning on the way, and she said, ah, you know, this Christian, we were just talking casually, Christian. And she said she just, she just wants to be able to do good. She wants to be able to measure herself in, in, in everything she, she, she does and, and to, to make sure it's good towards towards her fellow human beings. She didn't even mention me. <laughs> you know? But on a <laughs> just a, a, a joke. <laughs> but on a serious note, that is what we do to one another. Christ is an open book. Christ is an the Bible is open. You can go to almost any store that sells books now and buy the Bible. You can read, you can study it. That's, that's what God wants us, wants us to do. But for those who belong to the other side, you find out that they're always hiding their own commandments. They're always hiding their own protocols because they know it's not of light. Do we understand? Go to the store, get a Bible. If you, are, if you have Amazon Prime or all these stores where you can buy books, you can buy the Bible online. But all those, I don't want to mention names before they start attacking me. <laughs> you know? Amen. But, but that is the truth. Every other thing that is not of God is hidden. They hide it. Even when they obey their commandments, you don't know it. You can't decode it, except you're one of them. But everything we need to know about Christ is in the Bible. Practice Christianity. Be a practitioner of the word of God. May the Lord bless us all. Amen.